Here's everything you need to know about protein folding for the MCAT. And this is a 10 out of 10 in terms of importance. So watch this video now. Don't just save it for later. First, we have the primary structure and the bonds present in this are peptide bonds. Peptide bonds form between two amino acids and they occur when the lone pair and the nitrogen on one amino acid attacks the carbonyl carbon on the other amino acid. When it happens, it kicks off this OH and together the two amino acids look like this. All of these red bonds are peptide bonds that are connecting amino acids together. On one end of the peptide chain, you have an amino group that's not attached to anything and that's the N terminus. And on the other end, you have the carboxylate ion that's not attached to anything and that's the C terminus. Next we have secondary structure and hydrogen bonds are what hold that together. It's absolutely crucial that you know the hydrogen bond is forming between the oxygen that's on that carbonyl group and a hydrogen that's on the nitrogen of a different amino acid. The hydrogen bonds in the secondary structure never involve R groups and they're only between the backbone of the amino acids. Once the hydrogen bonds form together they're going to make one of three different structures. The first one is called parallel beta sheets. This happens whenever we form two rows of amino acids just like we see here and on the end of each row is the same terminus. So the C terminus is up here for each one of those rows and the N terminus is down here for each one. You often see these represented by arrows like what we have here that point in the same direction. The next one is anti-parallel beta sheets and we start with the same thing where we have two rows of amino acids but this time the N terminus of one lines up with the C terminus of the other and you'll see these represented by arrows that point in the opposite directions. The last secondary structure is an alpha helix and this occurs when the amino acid chain forms a helix structure. You'll see these represented by this ribbon structure drawn there. Next we have tertiary structure and tertiary structure is held together by bonds between the R groups of the amino acids in those peptide chains. Tertiary structure forms between multiple secondary structures. So we have a helix there and we have beta sheets here. And then bonds will form between the R groups of the amino acids in those chains. The types of bonds that can form are almost all intermolecular interactions. So things like H bonding, ionic interactions, London dispersion forces, or other dipole interactions. There's one type of covalent bond that can form, which is a disulfide bond between two cysteine residues. We can see that right here where a covalent bond forms between the two sulfurs. Last thing I want to point out is that this is all one single peptide chain. And lastly, we have quaternary structure. Quaternary structure involves the exact same bonds as tertiary, and it's still happening between the R groups of the different amino acids, but this time we are connecting different peptide chains to each other. The green here represents one peptide chain, so we can trace a line through the whole green structure, and that's an unbroken chain of amino acids. We can do the same thing for the red structure, and this is another unbroken chain of amino acids. And then these two chains can form all of those same bonds that we see in tertiary structure, which will then hold those two chains together. Then we can refer to these as two different subunits.